We're about to talk about episode She Hulk episode two. We're going to make this this review a little bit shorter than the last one because I, I think there's just less to talk about. I think I think there's less to talk about. I think the first review happened. The first episode came out. And everyone was like, bruh, 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 bruh. And it wasn't that at all. If you want to see what I kind of thought about the first episode of She Hulk, go watch the the review at the review. The there go watch the review it's on the youtube it's on twitch it's, on, it's, it's everywhere uh but this episode was kind of interesting because we saw that uh jennifer lost her job and then got it back uh we finally get some acknowledgement for Incredible Hulk, right? Let's bring that down a little bit. Boop! 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 And, um, comedy. We get comedy comedy so this episode ultimately it was like it felt like a little bit of a tease kind of it was like oh she lost her job like what's she gonna do they they change the title they do all this crazy stuff and then they give her her job back at the end of the episode and i was like why take it away now there's a caveat to getting her to Jennifer getting her job back because it's not really her job or her former job uh she is now the lawyer for superheroes slash villains the caveat the I don't know how to spell caveat what are you nuts the caveat caveat the caveat is Jennifer doesn't have a job have have a job she Hulk does now this is interesting because I've, I've been kind of mulling over this like why have this caveat why have this requirement from a political standpoint, why? From the show standpoint, from her boss's standpoint, I get it. He wants a meta repre representing metas. But in a show that is quote unquote, woke, quote, woke, 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 woke. I added that new thing on there. So I'm very excited about that. Woke culture why have that is it a way for a man to tell a woman what to do with her body a crusty old white guy <laughs> that occurred to me that occurred to me is it is it a stance on dress codes in an office is it a is it a dress is does it address get it because dressing is it addressing the need for an office like there's so many things that you can kind of peel away from maybe not the last one so much I'm kind of reaching on there but like it's interesting it's interesting right now I think it might be I think it might be kind of like a little bit it might be disney dipping their toes it might maybe might be me reaching they could be them dipping their toes in the political pool without actually doing so 
You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because no one tells She-Hulk what to do. No one. Not even Bruce Banner. Not even the experienced Hulk who has been massacring the world when he gets angry. Except corporate America. <laughs> oh, her family. How, how could I forget? Uh, we meet Jennifer's family. I forgot about that. Um, white corporate America just can't help but tell their employees, specifically women, what to do slash where slash how to look. This thing, I think, was so smartly done. It was not as in your face as Jennifer's monologue from episode one where she was just like, I'm a woman. I'm angry all the time. I'm better at doing the anger thing than you are, Bruce, which is true, which is true. But also we talked about this where Bruce has a form of DID, like it's a fictional Marvel form of DID, but it's still there and she doesn't. That's why she can like be herself and the Hulk at the same time. And Bruce doesn't have that luxury because the Hulk for Bruce is literally an altar. We talked about that. We, we won't, we won't regurgitate that. And then, and then she does it. She does it, which is interesting. Because she wants this job. She needs this job. Her job, Jennifer's job is her identity at this point. She does not view herself as a Hulk, rather a lawyer. But this whole thing of being like, hey, look at this little, again, look at the little thing that we're figuring out here. Look at this little, little uh, this little political thing. Here you go. We're not going to beat you over the head with it. We're just going to mention it once. We're not going to have a monologue about it. That's going to be it. And we're moving along. And I like that. And that's, that's what you got to do. This is literally hiding the, the medicine in the, the candy and the sugar, right? So literally doing that, which is what you need to do. Because if you don't, if you do not do that, on a form of content that is not initially thought of, designed, uh, consumed for political reasons, you're going to get, I'll show you what you'll get. I'll show you what you'll get right now. Let me pull it up for you. This is what my tweet was about, by the way, the other day. Episode one review. You literally get takes like this. Worse than I thought. Bad. Where's that one that really pissed me off? She-Hulk is terrible. Complete. There it is. Ben Shapiro. This piece of shit. Complete garbage. You get shit like this, which is unwarranted. It's not that bad. Is it great? No. Is it amazing? Absolutely not. It is mid as every single show since, I don't know, I, I, I would say, uh, Moon Knight? No. Hawkeye? Maybe. Has been mid. The movies have been mid. All just been lackluster mediocre middle of the road however you want to call it none of them are bad they are just disappointing this episode in my opinion episode two i think was a step up for me personally i think if i were to rate it 
the last episode i don't remember what i gave it but right now after thinking about it i want to say three out of five this one's a three and a half out of five for me it gave us more of the character it gave us more of her upbringing it gave us more about her motives and we got some really cool scenes and some cool setup uh, i do want to talk about in a minute um the scene with her father could they beat the netflix marvel show not in your eyes though gavin not in your eyes because now correct me if i'm wrong gavin but you enjoy the grittier superhero shows it seems to me based on the conversations that we've had in the discord based on what you've said in chat i feel like you appreciate the grittier uh quote unquote more realistic uh superhero shows and that's fine that's like to each their own but i don't think that to compare daredevil with she hulk is fair it would be like comparing ace ventura with oh i don't know schindler's list that's dramatic i know but you know it's kind of like that you know what i mean uh i forget who played her father there we go boom so we have mark lynn baker playing she hulk's father who is freaking a brilliant casting choice if he looks familiar to you he's been in so many goddamn things you won't it, it's like you just 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 so many things so many fucking things um he was in my opinion oh my god i'm going to murder i'm going to murder my web browser in a fucking minute i'm going to murder it There we go. For any, I was struggling. My browser opened up the mobile version of IMDb. I don't know why. Anyways, anyways, Marklin Baker, best known for his portrayal of Larry Appleton in Perfect Strangers, the classic. What is that? Eighties, late nine, uh, early late late eighties, early nineties. I don't know. Whatever the the sitcom there. Um, her father was, or is, he's not dead, is kind, understanding, and knows his daughter. So we have the scene where Jennifer shows up to a family dinner and her best friend will not go with her. She has a date or something. Jennifer doesn't want to go, but she goes anyways. She's kind of embarrassed that she's a Hulk now and everyone kind of knows the world knows after what happened at the end of episode one. Uh, so she goes and it's awkward, but it's fine. It's it's no worse than an awkward family dinner, right? There, everyone kind of asks her about superhero stuff, even though she's not been a superhero for more than a day. She's getting overwhelmed. You can kind of tell she's getting a little anxious. She's getting a little angry. So her father, stands up and goes oh i need your help with something in the other room he's very soft-spoken and it's expertly played they go in the other room and he says i don't need your help with anything i just want to check in with you are you okay and she says yes well no but i'm okay with not being okay and they have a little conversation and he reminds her this is such good this is like i aspire to be this father i aspire within this moment anyways he says, he says, it's okay. You're not the first Hulk that we've had to deal with in this family. And it's true. And he tells her, and you didn't even level Harlem. You, all you've done was punch a bad guy. And it kind of puts everything into perspective for Jennifer for a bit. And she realizes that her problems are her problems and but they are 
she's able to overcome them. She can overcome this. She's not a villain. She's not a monster in the eyes of society. She is a hero. And she kind of takes that and that makes her feel a bit better. And I really enjoyed that. I, I thought that was a really cool scene that they added in. They didn't need to. Uh, I think it showed a lot of growth and I liked it. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and then they go on with some funny comedy stuff and we get this really cool thing I want to talk about. And then we'll move on, I swear. Cause I said this is one wasn't going to be as long and it's getting to be pretty long. Two things I want to talk about with the Hulk. Number one, we get acknowledgement for the Incredible Hulk. So Jennifer goes to talk to Emil Blonsky, anyone who's seen the Incredible Hulk ed starring Edward Norton, uh, who eventually, as we know, got recasted, will remember that Emil Blonsky, played by the wonderful, the delightful, the super talented Tim Roth, was the villain. And we get a different perspective on the villain, the abomination. According to Emil Blonsky, he is not a villain. He was a tool used by the government and was discarded by them. And when you think about it, from a certain point of view, that kind of makes sense. He was a highly, in the MCU, in the in the 616 universe, which is like the standard comic universe, um, Emil Blonsky is a crazy scientist who goes off the deep end, makes off the abomination, blah, blah, blah. In the MCU, he, if you skipped the Incredible Hulk, because a lot of people said he could, because we haven't gotten any acknowledgement up until now. He was a highly decorated borrowed soldier, like black ops, top of the line. You can't get anyone better than this guy from the UK, from her majesty's royal arm or whatever the fuck it is. Gavin would know better. And he got injected with the super soldier serum. He thought he was going to be Captain America. And he was for a time. Just the serum wasn't as strong. This, the serum meant mess with him a little bit mentally at first. And then they injected him with more and they did the gamma radiation to him, right? And then he became the abomination. Jennifer meets with Emil in the episode, hears this because as She-Hulk, this is her first client for her uh, law practice, for the law practice she's working for. She meets with him, finds him very sympathetic, figures out a case that, hey, this was, the government did this to him. He's a victim. He's turned over a new leaf. He is calm. He is collected. He is remorseful. He's writing haikus and sending them out, even to Bruce. I just want a leader in the Hulk movies. Me too, Gavin. Me too. And Jennifer calls her cousin, Bruce, and kind of tells him that she's telling the job and wants his blessing, but it's not really required. Which again is great. I think that's great, smart, independent woman writing coming from a cis white male a cis head white male mind you but again it's like a she doesn't need his approval but she wants it she doesn't want she wants him to be okay with this but it's not a requirement it's not throwing it in anyone's face it's not it's not putting her on a pedestal it's not preachy it's not it's a character moment and she kind of nervously talks through this whole thing with him. And eventually Bruce says, it sounds like you're gonna take it. I think it's great. He sent me a wonderful haiku. It's ages ago. And he says, and he says, and this is like the best fucking part. This part made me laugh hysterically. He says that was decades ago. I was a completely different person. Because he was, he was Edward Norton. I thought that was nice. That was a nice little like, heh. and then I think even she looks at the, she breaks the fourth wall and she goes, heh. you know, that kind of thing. Um, it was nice. 
they're acknowledging the universal 2016 when did the incredible hulk come out the incredible hulk came out in 2008 that's off by eight years this happened 20 years in canon like bruce is over it he fought the guy once the guy apologized and he's over it so with all that being said jennifer is happy she gets cut off because smart hulk bruce hulk banner whatever the fuck you want to call him smart hulk i'll, I'll call him is on a sakarian ship and blasts off into warp speed i think setting up world war hulk i think this is the soft launch for a world war hulk series or movie I think he goes back to Sakar, sees, because remember, time passes differently in Sakar, right? We don't know how differently, but it, it passes differently. And I think we're going to go back to a war torn Sakar. And I think Bruce Smart Hulk is going to lose himself in that war. And he's going to become a bit more savage, I think. I think. He might not. The MCU Hulk is considerably different than the main 616 canon Hulk. But I think we're going to see something along those lines. Maybe even, even setting up his son, potentially, in World War Hulk and uh, and Planet Hulk. It's, it's setting up Planet Hulk. I keep on mis, misspeaking and saying World War Hulk. But it's really Planet Hulk, I think, is what it's setting up. And I think we're going to get Sakaar out of it, who is... Uh, Hulk's son. And I was talking about this with my close personal friend, Bradley Wota. Well done, Greg. Fucking kill in there. Thank you. Thank you. And he was saying that maybe they're going to have Sakar be a young Avenger. I don't know if I agree with that, but I think it's a possibility. It's certainly a possibility. It's interesting. This episode, I think in summation in summation in summation i think that episode two of she hulk was a step in the right direction it actually made me super excited for episode three i'm very much looking forward to it in a couple days when it comes out and we'll talk about that on friday again we're catching up i took the week off we're catching up here she hulk episode two step in the right direction three and a half out of five i think that's it that's all I got for you on She-Hulk.